baptism of his baby brother in church, little uh, Dennis sobbed all the way home in the back seat of the car. His father asked him three times what was wrong. Finally, Dennis replied, that priest said he wanted us brought up in a Christian home, but I want to stay with you guys. <laughs> slowly catching. Slowly in there. Mark, chapter 12. I know, some of you are just now getting that. <laughs> Mark, chapter 12. Verse 30 and 31. <clears throat> and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than the Lord. Now this same word is found in Matthew, chapter 22, verse 37, Deuteronomy 6, 5, and Deuteronomy 10, 12. And some of you have probably already got in your mind that you know exactly where I'm going with this message. Some of you have probably heard many messages from the scripture. I caution you this morning, think outside of the box. Think outside of, the, of your normal thinking when it comes to the scripture. I've challenged you in the past, in the past few weeks, to believe the impossible, live the impossible, ask the impossible from God. To ask God to use you every day that you live, and to ask God to do the extraordinary in your life when that becomes the new ordinary for your life. Yes. And in all of these things I've mentioned this morning, if you allow God to do that, He will take you on a journey in your walk with Him that if you look in the rearview mirror at some point, You won't believe that where you've been. Now with that in mind, I was encouraged when somebody came to me this past week and they began to share some things that were going on in their life and the struggles that they were having. And my first response was this. Can you remember how you would have reacted just six months ago? Or a year ago? Because their reaction would have been totally different. And it's because of their growth in the Lord. Because God has been moving in their life. And they've been responding and reacting to what God is doing in their life. And I'm encouraged by that. You may not see what God is doing in your life. You may not realize it. But I'm excited because as I stand back and I look, I can see the growth in your lives. Now I want to read that scripture just one more time. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And there's no other commandment greater than these. This scripture describes to me a Christian who is passionate about their walk with God. A Christian that is head over heels in love with their Lord and Savior. But you might say, Pastor, Jesus was asked by one of the scribes, which is the first commandment of all? It has nothing to do with what you just said. But as we look at the scripture, we see it shows us to love God with everything that we've got in us. Looking at different translation, it says, it puts it like this. We are to love Him in the strongest manner we are capable of doing. We are to love Him with all our riches. So think about that. We are to love Him with all of our imaginations. 
And remember, God is able to do above what you can ever begin to ask or think. You know, this week, an individual I know was given some bad news. And the only thing I heard out of their mouth was gloom and doom, was everything negative, was just nothing was on the positive side. And I could only begin to think that if I could only help that person with their imaginations. Imagining what God could do in this circumstance. And this is a Christian brother. What God can do in their life in regards to that situation. Because God wants to do for you far and above what you can even imagine. Where are your imaginations in Christ this morning? When or what can you imagine God can do for you? Because, because he said, I want to do more. Whatever you imagine, God says, I want to do more for you. So where's your imaginations in, in your relationship with God this morning? Now, those of you that are married, men, women, I want you to take a look at your husband and your wives. If they're not here, just the rest of you do the same. Oh, honey. <laughs> now, do you remember when you first fell in love with that person? Yes. Do you remember the twinkle in your eye? You remember your heart? I know my wife's going to tell me. Do you remember when your heart was skipping a beat? That's the type of love I believe Jesus is describing here. And then, many times more than that. Now I used the word earlier on, the word passionate. What are you passionate about? Some of you are passionate about cars. That's good. That's good. Some of you are passionate about sports. I have a friend that's passionate about skiing. He's a lot younger than I am, but he would he will hire this helicopter to take him into the back country and drop him out onto this fresh snow. And then he's got to ski his way out. And he also takes a, a, a camera team to video it. That's passionate. That's passionate. But people are passionate about all kinds of things. Are you passionate about your walk with God? I was thinking about Abraham and how how he dropped everything that he was doing, packed up his family, and they headed out on a journey because that's what God told them to do. He didn't know where he was going, but God said, I'll show you when you get there that that's where I want you at. Abraham had to have such a love for God and a passion in serving him if he would even begin to think of doing that. I read a story about a young missionary, <laughs> packed up everything, heading off to some foreign land, had a wife and two children, and not too many years after being there, his wife passed on, lost one of his children, <coughs> and what would keep someone on the field living with the tribe? That when they arrived, that they didn't understand a word that was said. Neither of them did. Living with a tribe that they had never met before. Conditions that were beyond measure. When he could have stayed in a country, was full of comforts full of the nice things that you and I experience. 
What would keep someone there? A God-given passion to reach people for Christ. And after getting to know this tribe, they came up with a term. The tribe came up with a term to describe this missionary. And a term that indicated that love that is real is a love that acts. And the term that this tribe called it is love with shoes on. <laughs> love with shoes on is the love of God. That's funny. With all your strength. Some of you like to take your shoes off, so. <laughs> love with shoes on. Our scripture this morning says to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, your mind, and your strength. When you love God in this manner, your passion is serving Him in any way that you can. Serving God with our strength, I believe, refers to our physical abilities, which would include a lot of areas of our life. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you? That in itself is a reason to be passionate about, passionate about our God and our walk with God. He dwells within you. Verse 20, you were bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit. God, I pray that you take my hands and you use them for your glory. Take my feet. That wherever I walk, I make an impact for you. Guide me, Lord, in your path. Take my mouth and let it be filled with praises to you. Let me speak as the very mouthpiece of God. And that's what the scripture tells us to do. And I imagine some of you are imagining now while you're at work and you're listening to people talk and you're going, Oh, that wasn't a God. So how do we respond? Speak ourselves as though we are the very mouthpiece of God. A passionate Christian will commit their talents to Him. 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11 says that each of us has, re has received a gift from God. So I know everyone here talks, right? Everyone here knows how to talk. So let the words that come out of your mouth be glorifying to God. If anyone ministers or if you reach out to people, let it be done in a way that will glorify God. In everything you do, let every action, every motion, every word glorify God. How about committing our finances to God? First, in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Paul expressed his gratefulness to the Corinthian church in that they gave whether they had little or whether they had abundance. The story is told of a man by the name of Henry Crow who got tuberculosis as a young boy and he couldn't go to school. After hearing a sermon by Dwight L. Moody, he prayed, God, I can't be a preacher, but I can be a good businessman. God, if you will let me make money, I will use it in your service. And under doctor's advice, he worked outdoors for seven years and he regained his health. He then bought this little run-down Quaker Mill in Ohio and within 10 years Quaker Oats was known as a household word because he committed himself to God. He was passionate about his love for God and he held to his word for over 40 years and faithfully gave 60 to 70% of his income 
to the work of the Lord. He honored God in his finances and he gave passion away. In John 3, 16 through 18, this passage, passage gives us a picture of the passionate love each of us should desire. It gives us not only a picture of real love and the practice of real love and the principle of real love. Jesus shows us what real love is all about by laying down his life for us. And then it asks a tough question. It says, so what if you had the world's goods and you see another Christian in need and say, you have the ability to help and you don't help. How can you say God dwells in you? And then the principle is this, simply put, <coughs> don't talk about love, but love with shoes on. Actively doing things which minister to people. As you know, I understand this is a giving church. This is a loving church. But there's always a little more that we can do. In fact, I just want to throw this one thing out. I had an organization come to me this week. A man is in charge of an organization. He says, Craig, he said, can you use food at your church? That's what we mean. Well, we feed the hungry. And we always have a lot of leftovers. That's what we mean. And my mind went to Sherry for having done all that she's done and getting things together. So we have a food pantry back there that can reach out to needy people. People have seen that in this community and now they want to give outside of the church, to the church, to continue reaching out. <clears throat> Actively doing things which minister to people. Let me translate that another way. I must love God with all my stuff. And I do so by using my stuff to minister to people. To minister to the love of God to others. When Linda and I go out and buy a new vehicle, we ask God to bless it. We ask God to say, bless it, car? Yeah. Bless it that it will be used for His glory and for His service. We dedicate it back to God to be used for His glory. And anything that God gives us, we pray God use it. Use it, Lord. Pastor friend said, on my key ring is a key that belongs to a pickup of somebody else in this church that's owned by another member of this congregation. This brother in the Lord said, you can use my truck anytime, just make yourself a key. And he did. And he uses that truck. The brother wanted to be a blessing to that individual. And that's how far he went. There are three words that I want to share with you in relation to loving God with all of your strength. Number one, it's first called stewardship. I will love God with my body, my talents, my money, and my stuff. And when I understand my proper relationship to those things, here we are. I have been entrusted by God with all of those things that I may use them to glorify Him. Everything that we have is given us to, given to us by God Himself to give back to Him to be able to minister out. Number two, sacrifice. Loving God with your finances. It's going to cost you something. Loving God with your talents will require sacrifice of time and efforts. 
Loving God with your body will sometimes mean sacrificing temporary pleasure so that you can reach out and minister to somebody else. It's an individual in this church has always wanted to reach out to other people. We gotta do this, we gotta organize this, we gotta do this, we gotta go through this. I said, do you realize what you're doing? Okay. You're already doing what you want us to organize to do. We don't have to put a title on it. We don't have to put a name on it. We don't have to hold up the big flag saying this is what we wanna do because it's already in action. This individual reaches out to numerous people and ministers to their very needs. And I thank God for that. Number three, service. Service is loving God, which is loving God with shoes on. This tells me it's a love that requires action. Loving God with my strength is actively seeking ways to be of service to God. Amen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, Jesus said, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What we treasure reflects our passion. I want each one of us to live our lives passionately for God. I want to encourage you to have a passion for God, but you know that's not something I can do for you. That's something you have to have a desire to do. A lot of people are just happy with the status quo. A lot of people are content with just being an ordinary what I came to term as an ordinary Christian. But I want us to be extraordinary Christians and having a step up the bar to make that the new ordinary in our life. <clears throat> That's my desire. What's your desire? That's my passion. What's your passion? my vision. What's your vision? Father, I thank you so much for this congregation. Thank you, Lord, so much for their love for you. How much they already do in your name. And we are a blessed people because you have blessed us. You have blessed us Bless others. God, I trust that our passion for you runs high. God, you set the bar for us and that you gave of yourself. You gave your life for us because you were passionate about us. I thank you for that, Lord. I'd like every head bowed and every eye closed just for a moment.